Summer, you said you were trying to, I guess, bring consistency to the lineup, but injuries and absences have always seemed to affect that. Um, how in particular are you going to try and replace Robbie Brady and Chidozi Albany? How? With whom? <laughs> yeah, well, obviously I'm not going to tell you who we are thinking about starting, but there's, there's a few options. Um, uh, I, I agree with you. This is probably in early days for me. It's good to have consistency in the same players doing the same things. But I think everyone is is in the know what we want. We, we're trying to be consistent in what we are saying, what we are asking for. Um, and I, I feel like the decisions that we make on trainings, uh, even in meetings, talking together, it's, it's not people is, is, is getting more and more on board. So hopefully in the future, it doesn't matter if Players, if player is missing, there will be an, a replacement that, that have the same knowledge on what we want. Could you find the players that you called up late, the likes of Matt Doherty and Ryan Manning, could end up starting the game against Rivet? Yeah, yeah. That's. No, no uh, just to answer Matt, uh, we always said that we, we didn't want to have both Matt and uh, Seamus, same time, we wanted to think a little bit in the future, so missing Seamus, missing Shane Duffy as well, two really experienced, no doubt in my mind that, that Matt was the, the replacement there. And how is your relationship with Matt Darby now? Because he's a senior player, uh, some would say he was snubbed in the last two uh, squads, and you'd expect perhaps a senior player to, to be angry about that, did he? Did he express himself to you? In that no, regard? no, no, it's been quite pleasant. <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, but what you're looking for is bastards in the team, aren't you? Yeah, you know, to, to, it, it's good to me. As a player, to, to be angry, to, to, to want to make a case. Do you think it'll motivate him for the game? I, I'll hope everyone, not only him, everyone will show up on the pitch. The players was asking him questions and stuff, and I think it's really good to connect the, the, the past, the past players, the, the legends in the past, to the present. Uh, what was good, really good, was uh, how he, as a as a goal scorer, as a uh, maybe a high profile player at, at his time, was talking about the importance of team unity, fighting for each other, you know, the spirit and things. So probably not the thing that you you, you would think that a striker would say scoring all his goals, but uh, I think it was a really good message to the players and. For me, we, we did that in Jamaica, bringing in old uh, legends just to connect the past and the present, uh, showing respect to the to the players from the past as well. Uh, I think I, that was a good thing. I think Nathan probably can answer that more how it how it affected them to have a have a player like him around. Yeah, but it was fair. Like as a kid growing up, these are the players you watch. You know, what I mean, you watch him every international camp. You watch him score his goals for Ireland. Um, obviously, you can't talk to him on a personal level then can you so you, you can only see what he's doing on the pitch but now that you see them on a personal level and what it means to them and, and what their team kind of done it, it's nice to know that we're, we're in a similar boat and what we're building here is what they had as well so I think we can uh, I think we can take a lot of things from what he said and, and use them in our team as well. Timmer who, who makes the decision as to what former players come in and who you want to talk to the team? Uh, like like this, uh, this was a cup presentation. I said this is something from the federation, so it's not me who, who decides on that one. Uh, and but but uh, it was really it was really a positive one. This this gathering, both for the players and I think presenting uh, the cups a former player doing. I think as a good gesture as well. Of all the players that have come in, are they all fit for the two games? I know, um, say, Daryl Shea's manager was saying he'd been managing a back injury. Have you everybody available to select tomorrow night? It's, it's, today would be the only training that everybody can be fully committed. So we'll see on the, on the session today. Um, yeah, it, Dara has been struggling with some, some back injuries. Um, and Festi as well was, was taken off with an injury. So they, they are, they're coming in today both training today, but we'll see how, how, how fit they are. If they can do a 90 minute or not, we'll just see after the training session today. But that's the that's the bad thing about this kind of camp. We had like, I think, eight players playing Sunday. So yesterday was match day plus two. That's normally their resting day. So today is the only training session that we can actually do something physical. Uh, and we, we'll test and see how they, how they are.
Nathan, uh, you mentioned the fast starts there, and Brentford have been getting a lot of praise for that and for their set pieces. And obviously, Keith Andrews is very involved. Uh, can you talk about the type of work that he's doing and, and how difficult that can be to replicate at international football when Timber says you have such a little amount of time on the training pitch? Yeah, I think, um, I think Keith's very detailed in his work. I think uh, it's always hard coming in as a coach and for the, let's say, Thomas Frank to trust him and I think he's done that really well I think he, he holds a lot of meetings now as well for us he, 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 Thomas sees it as a big thing set pieces so he has a lot of responsibility um, I think lads have bought into him early on I think he's uh, very commanding the way he speaks and what he does his work so I think he should take a lot of credit how we're doing set pieces and of course you have a lot more time with the lads in club football don't you you can see them a lot more you can have them every day but so here, it's a lot more rushed, it's a lot more specific, so it's it's more up to the lads to listen and take it on board than it is for the coaches to keep giving information. Damien, please. Amy, you've talked about this camp being your, your last opportunity to look at players before the qualifiers starts. Do you have in your head the team you would like to play in the first qualifier, or are there still places up for grabs in that team? Yeah, you're, all, you're always looking, you're never like set. Uh, I think we have found good connections between players on the pitch uh, and and understanding between certain players, etc. Um, but yeah, there's always space for better players in, in teams, whether it's a national team or a, or a club team. And then it's the form as well. So next next mar- is in, it, next mar- game is in March. So you never know who is flying at that stage and, and who is maybe injured or not playing well or not playing at all, so you can never decide your team for March uh, when it's November. And uh, Nathan, can I just ask, um, how important is it to go into those games in March on the back of, on a high from from these two games? Yeah, it'd be great. Um, I think that's what this, that's what our target is really, isn't it? This camp, you know, to, again to build on what we've been doing and then to go in with that winning feeling and knowing that we can go and beat anybody. I think that'd be be a great thing for us in the, going into March. Gavin, please. Uh, hey, Mir, uh, we were talking to Andrew Moore this week and he's been playing this new role at Stoke and deeper midfield role. Can he play that role for Ireland? And if so, is tomorrow night a chance to assess him in that role? We'll see. He, he's been struggling a little. He had a, um, a swollen calf after, after the last game. So he's been struggling a little. Let's see how he, he will do on training today. Um, but obviously, everybody sees him as the future for, for Ireland uh, and we just wanted to call him in because there, there was not a competitive game for the under-21s now so we wanted to call him in and just evaluate him in the squad seeing seeing what he can he can bring to this squad uh, and it's good good introduction for him as well to be among these these players and uh, but I, I think for the future you know time will tell he's still young uh, he has he has a He's probably not the most physical player in, in the squad, but you know, time will tell how big of a role he will have. Uh, and just on the, uh, on the game tomorrow, obviously you want to assess options ahead of, uh, ahead of the qualifiers, but you need to avoid defeat to avoid relegation. Will that bring a of pressure? Not more to us than Finland. Finland comes to, to Dublin and they need to win. I think that's, that's their priority. So. It gives us an advantage that they would probably one time uh, or the other. At some point, they will need to take more risks. So we need to be clever in that sense. So it doesn't bring more pressure or to, to us to that rather than the Finns. Ed's win the love. Um, I suppose just looking at the game, looking at from Helsinki, yeah, Fis- Finland brought a very physical approach, especially up front. They were really putting a lot of physical pressure on the defence. Bringing Shane Duffy back, um, was that the sort of reason that you were thinking of bringing Shane back for and now he's gone again? Is like, Would you just look for that bit more physicality from your defensive uh, players? Yeah, yeah. I said, I said um, in the press when we were announcing the squad that we lost a lot of duels in last last camp and he is one that doesn't lose many of his. Um, so, yeah, both in a sense of set pieces uh, and this physicality you're talking about you know, the Finland team is is, is a, a really organised team they, they know what they are doing uh, and they they pin up with the, the striker a lot so it's going to be a fight for 
the likes of, of, of Nathan and those who are playing in the centre of defence, there's going to be a lot of fights in this game. Uh, and that was one of, and obviously I haven't seen Shane in, in the squad, so I just also wanted just to work with him and see what he will, he will give to us, experience as well. So that, that is the reason why, why I really wanted to have him in this, this camp. Just in terms of when, when you're playing for a team that's under pressure, if you start thinking too much about your, your own game, does that affect your natural game then? Something like that, or you have to just put that apart and like, uh, next time that play, I'm going to play the same pass. Is that your mindset, or am I going to take a touch? You know, like, is it just a case of that 99 times out of 100 you're going to do that perfectly, perfectly well? And how, how does that play in your mind? Um. Yeah, I guess. I don't know if you will. <laughs> uh, I, I just don't do it again, I guess, really. I'd rather not. But um, I don't know. You just have to bounce back, really. I think I think I've made enough mistakes in my career already that I know I have to bounce back. Um, I thought I did all right, to be fair. I thought mentally. I think if probably a year or two years ago, would have been, would have been a bit lost after that. It would have affected me bad. I think I'm proud how I reacted. I think uh, the way I got on with it, I moved on, and then just... Yeah, I just went back to basics, got my won my little jewels, won my little passes, done them things right, and just got myself back into the game. Of course, it's annoying, it affects you, but with the group we have here, I know they'll they'll fight for me, they'll look after me, and yeah, they did. And, and then, um, last month before the Finland game, you said about the way Ireland were playing, like you were sick of it. How would you assess it now after the last month? Um, not as sick of it, I guess. We won a game. <laughs> Uh, I guess the Finland game has bring brought a lot for us. I thought, you know, you could see it again. We probably didn't start at greatest in Greece, but then you could see second half there was belief that we could go and win the game. I think we've been struggling for that belief that we can go win games lately. So I think it brought a lot to, it, especially to come from behind away to Finland. It brought something different in, into the team. I think Greece game, yeah, we we weren't at our best first half, but we did create a lot of problems for them. We defended really well. We defended as a unit. Um, and then we had a right go at the end. Unfortunately, it didn't come to anything. But again, it's a lot to build on. It's a lot of belief in there now. It's a, it's, a, it's something. It's a different feeling for us that we haven't had in a while. So I think to bring that into this into this camp, I think, yeah, it's going to be good. Hopefully. Yeah. Hey, um, depending on how you classify Sammy, but apart from him, all of your midfielders are playing in the championship. Uh, how do you view the, the jump from championship to international football? Is it easily bridged or is it a real challenge for players playing that league to play international football? It depends. depends on the player, in, in what position you're playing, etc. Uh, I, I often say that for a goalkeeper or a centre-back playing League One would be okay because it's going to test you a lot. So it, it depends on so many things. It's not like it's not like you can say that this is bad, this is good. It depends on the individual, it depends on the character, it depends on the team, how they're playing. So probably different from player to player. But obviously, we would like all our players to be playing in the Premier League, in the top teams, in the Champions League, against the best players. That's the ultimate goal, of course, and that, that's what we want. But you, you can still be a key player in the national team in playing uh, the, the Championship or even, or even lower. And traditionally, the championship would have been more direct than it is now. Is, does that make it more comparable to international football than maybe it might have been previously? It's, it's, I think this league is improving a lot, so it needs really quality to be playing, to be playing in the in, in the championship. And it's not only it's not only the quality; it's it's the amount of games and it's the the load on on the player. So you get massive amount of of games playing time there and sometimes you have players in the, in, in, in the Premier League not playing so it's it's also is it better to be playing day in day out in, in the championship or being on the bench playing a few minutes in the and it's also about the player himself it's it's different from from, from player to player. Damaton. Uh, Hamer you've spoken about wanting a settled team and uh, Chidoze has obviously played in all four games so far is he a quite difficult player to to replace because of his attributes, because of his pace? Like, do you need to get as close a fit to him as possible, or is it difficult to lose him in particular because of those skills? 
No, it's, it's 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 always a little bit more tricky when both him and Robbie, for example, have been starting all of the matches since I came. So it's a lot of invested time in the in them. Um, so that's that's maybe the, the 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 most important thing that we now we need to quickly adapt someone new into the, into those roles. So no, it's listen. There's always preference to have all your players fit and ready. I think we counted like ten players that we probably have already selected or or would have selected if if not injured. So, but that that's just how how it is at at this at international football. You you never know what team you have, you you have available. So keep them simple, simple. Be consistent in what you're saying. So when the player comes in, uh, even though he was in last camp, he will know more or less what we want. That's just. If we continue that, we will improve as a, as a unit. More players will be in the know what we want when they come in here. So that's just our job, trying to get the consistency in in this national team. But is, is it your preference to have pace in those wide areas? And that you would prefer? Pace is always, yeah. Pace is always good. Nothing beats beats pace. You cannot cannot coach pace. You cannot coach height. So these things you you need to have in your team. So. Of course, but we have we have a lot of other fast players as well. Philip, uh, thanks, Jeremy. Um, I mean, you said uh, when we were in Greece, uh, you said after the game that it was your intention to have two forwards together. It was intention to have Parrot and Ferguson playing together. But the way that game evolved, Parrot had to drop back a little bit because they had extra numbers in midfield. Is it your intention to play to to play two players in attack as Ireland coach? And do you see Ferguson and Parrot? as a partnership that can work? Because Irish teams over the years, at their very best, always played with two forwards. Yeah, it, it will always be the who, who we are playing, who we are playing, what are our attacking options? You know, can we can we create more with two strikers in the centre, <clears throat> etc. So that, that is something I think we need to be flexible on. What players are available? Who are we playing? What kind of defence they have, etc. Will they have more ball possession like maybe Greece did? Uh, and then we need to adapt to that we are defending, not attacking, etc. So it's, it, it's something that I like to play with two strikers. I think it gives options that we don't see much in the game today. But then we have just have other ways of of hurting teams if we play with one. It's just it's just you, you, you see the game in, in your head before you play it and then you decide to go with this. Is it an option for tomorrow? Yeah, it is. And do you, what way do they complement each other? And do you think Ferguson is in a better place physically than he was, you know, five weeks ago, six weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we see that in numbers. We see that in numbers from from Brighton. You know how much he is doing. So we know that he is he is progressing. Uh, but normally, in in the past, whoever you if if you're talking about. In the past, normally it was a big one, and it was a quick one. Uh, so, kind of a combination of those in in them. So, Troy, Tom, other guys running more in in spaces, etc. Uh, Finn or Sammy, other guys finding spaces. Evan is is of course really good in front of goal. That is where he should be. Just finally, uh, Finn has he played very well in Finland in that sort of advanced midfield position. He scored a couple of goals with Middlesbrough more recently. Um, do you see him at him with all the other player that you think you can trust uh, in your first eleven? And in what position do you see him most effective? He's playing more or less always the same position at, at Middlesbrough, like a ten row, finding runners in spaces, clever passes, and scoring himself. So I think that's his his best position, somewhere higher up on the pitch where he can. Uses strengths, which is creation. Creation. All please. Uh, Nathan, can I just ask you about Lynn Scales? Um, you know, he's, he probably had to be patient at times under Stephen. He seems to have grasped this opportunity, particularly last month. Can you just speak a little bit about his attributes and and the partnership that you guys can look to build up? Well, I've I've watched Scales. He played up since I was like fourteen. He played with my brother at UCD. He would have played centre back with him, so I've seen him play from there. Um, so I've always known him, I've always seen how good he was. Then obviously going through through the League of Ireland and getting his move, he's 
always had the qualities of a of a top player. So it's no surprise he's got his chance. I think he has been patient. He's bided his time, and he's been very patient. To be fair to him, but uh, Liam's a credit to himself. He has uh, what he does, how his patience, how he is as a lad, how nice he is. He, he's just a top fella all around. So he he does really deserve this, and he's taken it by like. But a scruff of the neck really hasn't he? he's been unbelievable to play beside you know I know he's there I know I can give him the ball I know he'll win his headers it, and it makes my life easier when someone like that's playing beside me what do you remember of him when he was playing with your brother I think my brother is still a bit better but <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have to say that but uh, no it's the same as he is now you know he's aggressive good on the ball and lovely left foot and to his hair as well so you always remember that don't you did you see him as having the capability of playing at a higher level when you were watching him today I was only like 14, I wasn't thinking like that. <laughs> Nathan, uh, I know it's one game at, at a time, obviously, but you know, how in England, Wembley on, on Sunday evening, is that extra motivation for for the players uh, for, you know, to perform poorly? Um, I don't know, because I haven't thought of it yet. I think I've, my only thought is Finland at home. That's that's the biggest game in the world now on, on, uh, on Thursday night. And then when that's over, then England will be the biggest game in the world, so... It's just one game at a time for me. I don't really, I try not to think too far ahead. Thank you very much, guys.